Okay, so next theorem we're going to give a simple characterization of a uniform continuity over bounded open intervals. Okay, so remember that over bounded open intervals, a continuous function may not be uniformly continuous. Bounded open interval, you don't have automatic uniform continuity. But the theorem 3.40 will give us a characterization. One, a continuous function is uniformly continuous over bounded open interval. Let AB be a bounded open non-empty of course it's not empty if it's empty we don't want to discuss anything interval okay uh, and f from a b to r so we have a function then f is uniformly continuous on a b if and only if there is uh, well if and only if not there is if and only if f can be extended continuously to the closed interval a b okay if it can be extended continuously to the closed interval a b in other words you can define function at two endpoints so that the new function is still continuous okay so i e if and only if there is a continuous function g from a b to r that satisfies fx is equal to g of x for x in the open interval a b okay so if you have continuous extension to the closed interval then it is going to be uniformly continuous all right uh cool so assume it has a continuous extension assume such g from a b to r exists closed bounded interval continuous function then g is uniformly continuous over a b if it is uniformly continuous over a larger set g is also uniformly continuous over the open interval a, b. it will be uniformly continuous over the smaller set subset okay if it is uniformly continuous over the superset it will be automatically uniformly continuous over the subset hence f is uniformly trivial right this direction the proof is trivial it's just a matter of the writing okay now let's prove the other side the other way now assume 
that f from a b to r is uniformly continuous is uniformly continuous okay so basically we need to define so we need to define f a and f b okay continuous We cannot just randomly define f a f b. If that happens, the new function will not be continuous. Okay, so f a f b, one is left hand point, the other one is the right hand point. They're pure symmetric, so we can just pick up one k uh, one end point and prove it, and uh, say uh, similarly we we get the other case. Okay, so let's assume uh, assume we pick up f. Uh, well, let's see. In the book, they, they, they pick up B. Now let's 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 prove uh, the situation for A. So we want to define F A continuously. So we need to keep the the limit. The limit. So we choose A. We choose A, and we need to show we need to preserve. Uh, this is right side, A plus. We need to preserve this property, that the continuity, the right limit is equal to F A. Okay, then this, we have the sequential characterization of the limit. We have sequential characterization of the limit, right? So we pick up a sequence. xn in a b ways the limit of xn is equal to a so you let you let this point approach a from right side uh, here you pick and we define and and this sequence xn is a Cauchy sequence not defined or required. It's because it's convergent sequence. Convergent sequence is always a Cauchy sequence. And Cauchy sequence is always convergent. That's even only if case. Oh, when, when you have limit. Okay, Xn is a Cauchy sequence. Xn is a Cauchy sequence. F is uniformly continuous. So, Fxn is a Cauchy sequence in R, right? F X N will be the Cauchy sequence. That's exactly the, the 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 what's the name? The theorem we proved. Lemma, not the theorem. Lemma three point three point thirty eight. The lemma, the uniform continuity preserved the Cauchy sequence. Okay, fxn is a Cauchy sequence and it has a limit. So we define fa to be the limit fxn. Well, it seems perfect. We are, we are done about it. Uh, but there is a, a, a small, not small, actually there is a fundamental problem, issue, not problem, issue. This is not done. This is not done. The reason is that you pick up, whenever you say you pick up, you choose, it's not unique. It's not unique, okay? If we pick up another sequence, Y n in A B weighs limit Y n is also equal to A. 
then this yn is again a Cauchy sequence, f is uniformly continuous, f of yn is a Cauchy sequence in R, then it will give you another limit. So we need to show that the limit of fxn is equal to the limit of uh, uh, fx yeah, is equal to the limit of uh, fy after you prove this you can say that your definition does not depend on the choice of this uh, sequence and this is a uh, well defined this it's very important every time when you say pick up something choose something later you are going to say this selection does not give you different result or different answer all right okay uh, x n approaches a y n approaches a then we know here we're going to show this we know that x n minus y n will approach zero as n approaches infinity x n minus y n will approach zero as x approaches infinity Okay, this means there is a given epsilon greater than zero. We first find the the uniform continuity. Choose the delta greater than zero such that x minus y upscale less than delta implies fx minus fy upscale less than epsilon. So this is uh, the uniform continuity. And then for this delta, for this delta, there is a capital N. There is a capital N in the set of natural numbers such that for all n greater than or equal to capital N, upscale x n minus y n is less than delta. Upscale x n minus y n less than delta, hence f x n minus f y n will be less than epsilon. Right? f x n minus f y n will be less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to y n. Okay, so this is always correct. For every epsilon, you can always, for every given epsilon, you can always find a capital N such that for all n greater than capital N, this is correct. Then that's exactly the limit. So we pass it to the limit, pass it to the limit. So picking the limit, we have the limit this is continuous function. Ups value is a continuous function, so you can exchange it with the limit operation. You take the limit of two sides, the limit of ups value. Ups value is a continuous function. You pass the limit into the ups value, and this is the difference. You have the, the difference law, rule of a limit. So and once you, whenever you get the limit of inequality, less than becomes less than or equal to. The limit of epsilon is still epsilon. So this is correct for all epsilon. Greater than zero. Okay, so this limit is always, is, is okay, of course here is greater than or equal to zero. Ups value is greater than or equal to zero. So this implies this, uh, the difference has to be zero. those two limits are equal. All right, so that's uh, exactly the, uh, actually this is uh, exactly the copy of uh, uh, the proof in the textbook. We just change A to B. Okay, so we define 
FA and we define FB. We can define F of B. And by the sequential characterization of the limit, Sequential, is the right word? Sequential, yes, sequential characterization, characterization of limits. We know FA is the right limit, Fx, and FB is left limit above fx at b. So this means f is extended continuously onto closed interval a, b. So once you have once you have a uniformly continuous function, you can do this extension. The uniform continuity is used to guarantee the limit exists. You can find the limit. Okay? So that's all. the whole proof of everything. That's the whole proof of everything. And this characterization only works for the bounded open interval. It only works for the bounded open interval. It's because this part we use after we make it closed, not open. We have to make it closed. It is a closed bounded interval. Then you have uniform continuity of this uh, extension g of x. If your interval is open but unbounded, then even at this step, you cannot have if and only if situation. Right? So this only works for bounded open interval. This proof only works for bounded open interval. You cannot change it to be unbounded or arbitrary open interval. Open interval. That's not correct. OK, so from this proof, you can see that uniform continuity over the open bounded interval actually is just determined by the right limit, the existence of a right limit at, so the uniform continuity over AB only depends on The right limit at left end points and the left limit at right end points. If those two limits exist and are finite, then everything is correct. Then the function, then the func continuous function will be uniformly continuous. So you have to, you don't have to c check the epsilon delta stuff. You only check those two limits. Okay, so that's all. Example uh, 3.41. So prove that fx equal to x minus 1 over log x, whatever base, is uniformly continuous. On the open bounded interval zero one. Okay? So based on this observation, this observation is uh, uh, is uh, followed from this uh, uh, whole proof. 
Okay, so from the proof, you can see that we only need the, 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 the limit at the two end points. Okay, so, so technically we're going to compute this right limit. When x approaches zero from right hand side, x minus one will approach negative one. This is a fixed number. But natural log, uh, later you will see it's less natural log. Whatever basis is, is, is okay. The natural log of x, when x approaches zero from right side, will approach negative infinity. So this is negative one over negative infinity is zero. A number over infinity is always zero. So this limit exists. And the left limit at the right end points. So this place, we need the L'Hopital's rule, the L'Hopital's rule, because it becomes a zero over zero. It's indeterminate form. So you apply L'Hopital's rule. So here is a one. The denominator, if you have a base A, then you know what is a natural log, uh, what is the derivative of log A of x. It's a one over log A, a net a n of A. Okay. It's this, right? Oh, well, let me get. So it's a ln of a times x. When x approaches one from right hand uh, from left hand side, it's just one over ln of a. When you have a base a, whatever base positive, right? Okay, so this is again exist. It's a fixed number. So after you check those two limit, so you can say f is extendable uniformly, uh, continuously on zero one, hence f is uniformly continuous on the open interval zero one. And that's it, right? So, so again, you will see that over the interior part is perfect. There's nothing you need to worry though. The, the problem comes comes from two under points, right? The problem comes from under points. Okay, so that's a section three point four. Today we finish this section three point four, and now let's see the exercise on page eighty three. We have exercise one. Exercise one, use definition to prove each of the following functions un is uniformly continuous over zero one. You can just pick up one or two of them. One or two of them. And there are three examples. If you have time, you can try all, but if you don't have time, at least try one or two of them. And, and two, two, there are several A, B, C, D, E. Yeah, there are five, five problems like this, like this uh, 3.41. There are five, you, you, you try at least the three of them. And that's uh, simple, it's not difficult. Three, three, you, you, you find all real alpha such that x to alpha times sine one over x is uniformly continuous on an open interval zero one. And try to do three. Uh, Okay, so you just do them and let me see. If you have time, I just say if you have time, you can try five. Five is also very interesting. Okay, okay, very good. So this is our. our the section 3.4, try to do some exercise, make sure you understand, at least memorize those uh, steps. Thank you very much.